start with some of the ideas of Marx. Um, well, Marx believed that people were basically socially constructed so that we, we were blank slates and that whatever our nature was was given to us essentially by our surroundings, but even more importantly by our social class, right? Because Marx was a theorist of social class and believed that the primary dispute, let's say, the, the primary motivator of human history, the primary driver of human history was something like the rich versus the poor, the bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, and that was a consequence of your social upbringing and that your group identity was paramount. Okay, so there's nothing about that that's vaguely Christian. That's not how the Christian worldview works, not how the Judeo-Christian worldview works, because in that worldview, you're fundamentally an individual. Your nature is fundamentally attributable to you by God. You're fundamentally responsible to God, and, your, and, and history itself is something like the playing out of your relationship to the transcendent. So those things aren't even, those aren't the same. They're not commensurate. You can't believe both of them at the same time. Um, Marxism is a materialistic philosophy. It's predicated on the idea that, um, essentially, an idea that Dostoevsky criticized in great depth was that if you just made people rich enough, let's say, if you deprived them of their privation, if you equalized their economic status, let's say, um, that the utopia would come to light upon earth and you know I, I have a certain amount of sympathy for a viewpoint like that because you know who likes starvation and and misery you know there, there's nothing positive to be said about that but I think Dostoevsky was right too in his criticism of Marxism although he wasn't directly aiming this at Marx in notes from underground where he noted that you know if you gave people what they wanted in terms of let's say bread and circuses if they had as he said, nothing to do but eat cakes and busy themselves with the continuation of the species, which is kind of a nice phrase, um, that the first thing they would do is take a hammer and smash things just so that something improbable and strange would happen, just so that we could have our way. You know, and, and it's kind of a recapitulation of the idea of original sin in, in Dostoevsky's subtle manner, is that we're the sorts of creatures that, you know, what did he say? We're ungrateful. That's the thing that primarily distinguishes us from animals is we're ungrateful and that we can curse that was what he thought made us different than animals and that if even if we got what we wanted materially that wouldn't satisfy us because we're not the sorts of creatures that can be satisfied with material possessions let's say or material comfort because it isn't even obvious that we're after comfort i mean what what do you want you want you want to just lay in a feather bed and eat peeled grapes all day i mean maybe for an hour or so that might not be a bad idea but you know you're it's going to get dull pretty quick you're going to go out looking for trouble and and it's certainly possible that the more material resources and the easier they were to get that you have at your disposal, the more creative ways you're going to find to cause yourself trouble when you go out and look for trouble. And so, and that's a testament to the human spirit. And Dostoevsky knew this. It's like, well, whatever we're here for, it isn't the utopia of equal material distribution. That, that's not we're, not, we're not, we're not looking to be fed and asleep, you know? And I don't know what it is that we're looking for. God only knows. Maybe what we're looking for is to continually keep looking, something like that. I mean, that's the sorts of creatures that we are. But, but, the, but the materialist philosophy is that, well, if you just provided for people economically, problem over. And uh, no, wrong. I mean, most of you are, as given that you're, you know, you're going to, be ill in one way or another and that you're still subject to mortality and, and all of the terrible natural limitations that human beings are characterized by, you're about as well off as you're going to get. You know, the, the economic data already show that once you have enough money so that bill collectors aren't chasing you, which basically puts you, say, at the kind of in the upper reaches of the working class or maybe the lower end of the middle class, something like that, that additional money has absolutely no effect whatsoever on your self-reported well-being, which is something like a combination of positive emotion and absence of negative emotion. So you might like to think that, you know, if you were rich, your life would be better. And maybe it would be somewhat better, but 
wouldn't be as much better as you might hope. Um, and that's because you'd still have most of the problems that people have. You know, you still maybe wouldn't get along with your sister and you'd still get divorced and maybe you'd even be more likely to. And there'd still be illnesses that would beset you. You'd be able to deal with them perhaps with some degree of more urgency. Um, but, and you'd still have the problem with what the hell your life is for and what you're doing on the planet and how to conduct yourself in the proper way. And so... So we don't want to be too naive about materialism, even though we don't want to be ungrateful for its advantages. Marx also believed, well, I said this already, that you know history was basically characterized by the war of socioeconomic groups. That's been transformed more recently into the war of identity groups, which is the same damn thing, and it's the same old wolf in new sheep's clothing, as far as I'm concerned. That you know the best way to conceptualize human beings is. Well, I don't know, whatever your damn identity is, maybe it's sex for you and it's ethnicity for you and it's gender for you and God only knows what it is for you. And, you know, and that's who you identify with and all there is in the world, and this is the postmodernist view, is hierarchies of people in these identity groups struggling for dominion. You know, and that's a quasi-Marxist viewpoint. It's just a variant of the bourgeoisie versus proletariat theory of history, which is a foolish theory as far as I'm concerned, and certainly not one that we need to take forward into the 21st century, although we seem, you know, destined to insist that we do so. He believed that the revolutionary overthrow of the oppressor class was necessary and morally demanded, and um, that turns out to be a little bloodier than I would say the typical Christian, Judeo-Christian ethic might require because it doesn't require you to take up arms against your evil overlords and, well, put them in gulags and kill them by the millions, for example. And that, to me, seems to be an important difference. Um, there's, there's no, in, in the Judeo-Christian tradition, there's no guilt, there's no group guilt, right? You're guilty and you're guilty and of different things, I, I presume. Um, and, and that's your problem, but maybe you're also innocent. Who knows, you know, but whatever, it's on you. It's not a consequence of your racial heritage or your ethnicity or your gender, any of those things. It's, it's between you and God, let's say, or it's between you and the state even, but at least it's between you and the state or God. It's not like, well, you know, your father was a uh, factory owner, let's say your grandfather, and so it was perfectly reasonable during the Russian Revolution and the Red Terror to vacuum you up along with your whole family and do away with you because you'd been irredeemably tainted by your bourgeoisie past. So that's another place where Marxism and Judeo-Christianity are, they're, they're not just different, like they're opposite. You know, it's not just variant one and variant two. These are like seriously different ideas. And so there's another reason you can't be a Marxist and a Christian. 